Hi, this video will take you through some of the basic navigation uh, columns and items, things that you need to know about how to get around inside Scissortail HCM. So first of all, let's talk about the home screen and uh, the options menus. I've logged in as Kathy Watts, the HR Director of Payroll and HR for our demonstration company. And at the top of each page, you're going to see this header where, uh, you know, there's going to be some always going to see your Scissortail HCM logo. And then depending on the page that you're on, you may have uh, your dashboards across the top or what have you. So when we go into the reporting screens, the first thing that we need to know is that the best way to get there is to use this hamburger menu or the menu option. So I'm just going to park that here and pin it to the side of the screen so that we can see some of the different things as we're moving around. So let's go in, of course, as the um, administrator, Kathy has the star which contains her favorites areas. She has the single silhouette which is established for most employee self-service items. And then there's the two silhouettes or the dual silhouette and this is the My Team icon. And this is where you manage your employee information and do tasks that have to do with your employees. And then of course, administrators also have the settings icon, which takes you into some of the company setup items that can be changed at the global level. So let's go into the My Team and employee information to be able to look at how to get around inside the application itself. So this is a great way to find all of your employees in the employee list. And when we review this page, some of the things that to remember again are at the top, you would have that menu icon. Uh, since we've got the menu pinned, it's not here, but if we unpin it by clicking the paper clip, Xing out of the menu, there's the hamburger icon or the menu. Again, I can pin it just by clicking on that little push pin and it stays on the screen. Now at the top of every page, there is a back arrow. This will take you to the previous page or the previous area that you've been working on. Also, just under that, you have a page listing. We're looking at one of one pages or one through 25 of 25 rows. If you want to see everything on one page, a great thing to do is to click on the word page, which is a blue words, so therefore it's a link to something that we can do, um, and just change that to 200. Then if you go to the three little dots to uh, change your actions, you can save the view and just update the current view if you have one already saved by clicking save. This overwrites your saved report options and makes your new report going to always default to those 200 rows. Now, another thing that we want to see is the report view. Right here next to the word saved, you have some blue words that tell you which report you're looking at. This is a saved report of the employee information view. So when we look at the new employee list, we can click on the drop down and we can see the other saved views as well as shared views for our reference. Maybe someone else has shared it with, saved it and shared it with us. This way we don't have to reinvent the wheel every time we need to run a report. Now up here at the top of the screen, you will see the menu group. This one says My Team, so that indicates that we are in the My Team icon or the two silhouettes. Over at the top right, we have function buttons. These buttons will allow you to do different functionality, but depending on the report that we're on, and again, this employee information is the report that we are running, um, we have the breadcrumbs right above that, but depending on the report that we are running, we may have different function buttons up here at the top. 
notice that on this employee list, if I select certain icons, other buttons light up for me to be able to use them as part of the process. And then if I want additional actions, I have the three dots to the far right that I can use. Also, some things to remember on the report are your filters and your other views that you're allowed to use. So you have your custom filter or your columns. You can always click on the filter and see what you're filtering by. If you have a really wide report, sometimes this is very helpful to be able to see, oh, I'm filtering out not equal to terminated. So maybe I wanna remove that so I can see terminated employees in my employee list. We even have the ability to build custom filters um, and add multiple parameters so we get just exactly what we want. This piece of paper over here with the view data, if we click on that drop down, it's, we can say view data, view charts only, or view charts and data. So depending on how you've saved a report, you may see some charts at the bottom. If you wanna see more data and less charts, you can just change your view. And then finally, we have the three little dots. We used them earlier. These are called your action dots. This is where you can come in and you can add and remove columns. You can sort your columns. You can even uh, change and save your views. To drill down on an employee, you can just click the blue icon at the very beginning. That's a little box with the silhouette. This is uh, the employee information screen and it takes you into the employee's record. So the first thing that you're gonna see on the employee record is that you've got the header at the top of the screen with the employee's name. You also have the quick links that will get you to multiple things very quickly. The employee's ID, their original hire date, and their job title. You also have these search bars around the screen that allow you to search for different things. If you want to do a global search for a particular task, you can use the search bar in the menu or you can use the search bar at the top of the screen. If you're on an employee record, it's really nice to be able to use this search bar for the employee record. It's under the utilities button or the function buttons. So you could just type in here the word profiles and it would take us directly to the profile section. Again, on the task-based screens, we can see that we have multiple tabs across the top and you have the edit tabs button, which will allow you to add and maneuver and move widgets and things around so that it's more convenient for your work process. You have a jump to menu on the right, or I'm sorry, on the left, which will take you, uh, give you the ability to jump directly to a particular section that will give you personal information or maybe even base compensation or down to dates. Each box is considered a widget and like I said, you could click the edit screen and grab and move uh, information around simply by doing that. When you're on this screen, you may see some areas like locale or many of the profiles where you, the words are in blue for the field. If the words are in blue for that field, that means you have, that's a link to get you to the setup for that particular area. So if I were to click on, let's say security, the blue word security, then that takes me straight into the security profiles and policies. I can see the breadcrumbs up here and I can see all of my other security profiles that are available. If I'm on the security profiles, I can even look at or click on the icons to be able to see who all is included in that particular security profile. If I want to edit the profile, you simply click the pencil or the edit icon. Again, we use the back arrows to 
go back to where we began. They'll always take us what I like to call up from out of the basement. And then of course you have the ability to do quick searches for other employees or functions as well as um, uh, to be able to use the menu. So if I wanted to look for um, cost centers, I could come in and I could go to global setup, I could go to the import section, or any number of options. I can do the same thing over here and I can look for checklists. A checklist is a, a grouping of items that we're going to set up for multiple employees or for different people to be able to complete things like a first day uh, package for a, a new employee, things that will walk them through the things they need to complete. Again, the search widget for names, uh, which is on the employee record, will give you the ability to type in things like checklists. And the widget we can see is found on multiple tabs within the employee record. And no matter which one I check on or click on, it will take me to the same one, the, the same widget. Even though I have the widget on multiple places, I'll get the same information no matter where I go. All right, that'll get you around the system um, and get you started. Hopefully you'll get comfortable. And uh, as you have questions, you run into things, you want some additional information, be sure to reach out to support at cs3tech.com.